In this scenario, we're going to be deploying XML Notepad 2007 as our demonstration application to computers who belong to a certain security group. And this is fairly typical you'll see out in enterprise environments where you need to deploy, you know, I don't know, Adobe Reader or some other software to a certain group of computers. What we have here set up is a Windows 8 client machine, and then we also have our domain controller, which is my domain controller at home here. What I've done already is I created a user, um, just for demonstration purposes, who will be logging into this client computer, and um, this computer is already joined to the domain, and that's pretty much it. So we're going from scratch here. Uh, first up, what you want to do is you want to find the application online and download it. So for this example, I went to uh, XML Notepad 2007. The download link is the first one. Click on it. Go ahead and download the MSI file once it comes up here. So, right there. So once you have it downloaded, what I did is I actually put it in my one of my names, my DFS namespace locations. Uh, and if you watched my previous videos, the one specifically on DFS, um, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about here. But so what I want to do is I want to show you. I'm going to go back to my South Town DFS. And then in my software location, I create a folder called XML Notepad. And this is where it's residing. Everybody has access to this folder. So basically, you want to make sure you, you place this MSI in a network location where everybody has access. Now, a lot of times you may see it in like the net logon um, section. So stdc one net logon. Uh, I also have a deploy folder here where I dump some stuff. Uh, a while back when I was installing um, you know these MSIs or deploying them and you can you can put them in here as well because everybody has typically has access to the net logon folder but uh, for this case I'm just gonna be running it out of the DFS software folder okay so I'm gonna go ahead and close that and what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and create a, a group to dump computers into uh, who who are going to need this software applied. Uh, so a typical scenario would be like maybe Office 2007 or Office 2003 or something where uh, not everybody in the environment needs Office and then of course licensing comes into play with, with Office so um, you may want to apply it only to a certain amount of computers. Uh, so what we're going to do is go into Domain Computers and Lab and I want to show you this is where I put this computer here which I guess it's not very important, but just showing you that this computer name is Client3. And what I want to do really is go into the user's container, the one that's that's there by default when you install Active Directory Domain Services. And this is, you can see there's other groups in here as well that were installed by default. Now I have one created here already for this, but I'm going to go ahead and delete this and start fresh. So right click in an empty area go new group we're gonna leave it global and security and we're gonna name this and uh, I'm gonna be fairly specific because as you do more and more of these um, it just makes sense to make them as descriptive as possible so it's easier to read um, later on so I'm just gonna I'm gonna start with uh, software dash XML notepad 2007 now that's good enough. That's telling me, hey, it's a software group and the software name that we're installing. We're going to hit OK. And right now, it's not doing much good because we didn't add any computers to the group. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it, go to members, and I'm going to click on add. We want to add the computer name. Now, as long as you have, um, have some part of the name that's in Active Directory, you can go ahead and just hit enter and it should find it. I didn't find it. Client 3. Isn't that what I named them? What the heck did I name the computer? And oh, it's because. <laughs> sorry, I just woke up. It's 4:51 in the morning, and uh, I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. So, we got to switch the object types to include computers. So now we can type in a client, and it should pick up client one, two, and three. I just want client three. And apply. Okay. So right now client 3 is a member of the software group. So now what we need to do is create a group policy and 
tie this software group only to it. And you know, so so that way only that software group gets the application installed. So go ahead and minimize some of this, clean it up. Now, go, drilling down to your group policy management, we need to go to the domain computers. Actually, we can probably just put it in the root here, but typically I'm not gonna have any computer accounts in anything else, any other OU other than this. So what I want to do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it in our domain computers OU right here. And um, so what I'm gonna do is right click it, create a GPO in this domain, and link it here. And also this one you want to be somewhat specific. I'm just gonna name it the same thing as the group is named that we just named. So software XML note pad 2007 give that a second all right so we have we have our group policy here so what we're going to do is right click that go on to edit okay policy software settings software installation right click in the in a blank area here new package and as you can see I already I'm already pointing to that location but What's important here is you, you do the UNC path to that location. Because if you just go to C or wherever you put it on, on the hard drive on this thing, this computer, when it goes to try to try to install that application, it's going to kind of yell at you and say, wait a minute, I don't have it on my C drive here. So you want to make sure you put the UNC path. DFS and then software. I'll just open that up and then XML notepad and then there's our file. Um, we have two options here, assigned and advanced. Uh, probably want to just go into advanced, but I want to show you, you can go to assigned, but I personally like to go in here and make another change. So it's kind of like going into the advanced settings. I don't feel like changing anything in general, but the deployment here, what I want to do is uninstall this application when it falls out of the scope of management, meaning if I remove this group policy from that OU or I remove the computer account from the group it's gonna uninstall the application otherwise it'll sit on the computer all the time so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that we're done editing that but there's another thing here we need to do right now this group policy is gonna apply to every computer that's that's in the environment and it's going to do that with this authenticated users group over here. So what I'm going to do is remove that. I'm going to go ahead and hit add. We want to go ahead and change the object types. Actually, we don't need to because the groups are already checked. So what we want to do is we want to apply it to the group that we created. So XML, oops, I'm just going to do software. And again, I only have one group, uh, one group that starts with software. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter right there. And it found it, software XML. And that's pretty much it. So it's saying, hey, only apply this group policy object to computer accounts that are in this group. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just uh, close out of that. Actually, I'll leave it open. So now what we want to do is come over here. We're going to go ahead and do a GP update. All right, so I went ahead and ran a GP update. And uh, you want to restart? Yeah, let's restart this bad boy. Let's see. Let's see if we can log in. It should apply no matter who's logging in, because it's a it's a it's a pawn computer restart because we applied it to the computer account. It may take a minute. Now my cat is chewing on a box behind me, so she likes to she likes to eat boxes. All right, so it may still take a minute to finish. We should see it pop up. There it is. XML Notepad 2007. Now, if I just try to open it right now, because I'm on Windows 8 and I don't have the .NET Framework 3.5 installed, I believe it's 3.5, it's probably going to complain. See, you're following? Yeah, you need that. So, but it, you know, typically in a Windows 7 environment or something, it's not going to be a problem because you're going to probably have that .NET framework installed already. And I just don't feel like going any further. But this is just for demonstrating how to install applications via group policy. 
um, and apply it to certain groups. So now in the future, anytime you need to add another computer to this group, like let's say Susie in accounting uh, needs to have XML Notepad installed, all you gotta do is find their computer account or, or find the group. Let's see. No, actually, but probably be easier if you just go to find the computer account. My cat is chewing up papers now. So find your uh, that's to me. Find your computer account. Let's say it's this one. Go into member of, add XML Notepad. Again, you could just put partial. Oh, actually no. Let's do software and then XML. There it is right there. We're going to go ahead and add it to the group. What just happened? There we go. And all we got to do is hit OK. And then next time the computer GP updates and reboots, it's going to install the application. So for now, I'm just going to remove it. And that's pretty much all there is to it uh, on, a, on a pretty simplified scale here. So if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe and uh, share, thumbs up, favorites, all that good stuff. You know what everybody else says. All right, guys. Later.